You are listening to the Your Knee, Your Health podcast. I'm your host, Adam Rosen. I'm a fellowship-trained, board-certified orthopedic surgeon who specializes in knee replacement. Here I'll talk to you about common knee complaints and other orthopedic issues. We'll cover other important health-related topics, all of which are meant to helpfully answer some of your questions and help improve the quality of your life. Thanks for listening, and on with the next episode. Hello and welcome back. This is Adam Rosen and you're listening to the Your Knee, Your Health podcast. So today I would like to talk to you about Baker's cysts. So Sir Morton Baker actually first described this in an article and I believe it was published in 1877. Yes, 1877. So more than 100 years ago. And he described it as a swelling or outpouching behind the knee in the space that we also now call the popliteal fossa or popliteal face, space. And that's an area behind the knee joint itself. And, you know, he described these swelling areas and this kind of cystic formation from anywhere from the mid calf up to the mid um, kind of upper leg. And this was then termed by his name a baker's cyst. And this is actually a swelling or an outpouching um, from the knee joint itself. So there's a lot of misunderstanding or misperception of, you know, what a baker's cyst is. And, you know, a lot of surgeons get referred patients from their primary care doctor who have ordered an MRI or an ultrasound, and it noted incidental findings of a baker cyst and, you know, referred to the surgeon for an excision or removal or drainage. And honestly, rarely that's done. And and the reasons are multiple. And it really kind of goes back to the history where, you know, when Sir Morton Baker first described these, obviously back in the 1800s, you know, surgery and the uh, way of sterilizing the area and antibiotics were completely different from today. So a lot of the people that they actually operated on developed infections and wound up with amputations. But even more recently, you know, when people operate on these and make a big incision and excise the cyst, what happens is it reoccurs. Why? Well, it's not a cyst like you would think about in other parts of the body, like a cyst um, in a breast or a ganglion cyst that you can necessarily remove and take out as the structure. It's more of an outpouching of the knee. So if you've ever taken your tire and as it's gotten older and worn and you kind of rubbed up against the curb hard, that weakening causes this outpouching or this bubble effect. Um, it's still your tire, Um you know that you can't really excise it because then the tire would be completely flat. And that's what happens with this Baker cyst is there's some areas behind the knee between some structures and tendons where when the knee swells, there's this path of least resistance and it can stretch and cause this outpouching of the knee capsule. And the, the knee capsule is basically the lining which gives the knee its basic uh, area where the fluid can circulate because we do typically need normal fluid inside the knee to lubricate the joint and lubricate the cartilage. But when you have an excess of this fluid, you know, you'll see it in an athlete being termed athlete's got water on his knee. If that fluid then pushes out the back, it's been termed a popliteal cyst or a baker's cyst. Now, the most common reason that we see it is arthritis, you know, meniscus tears or anything that causes chronic swelling in the knee can cause this to occur. You know, it's hard for swelling to come directly out the front because you have these tendons and bones and on the sides, ligaments. So there's harder, denser structures, which really prevent this large outpouching. But even people that get swelling in the front of the knee, there's not a name really associated with it other than knee swelling, Um, but no one's name is really attached to it. So in the back of the knee, it's always been termed this Baker cyst. And, you know, if you remove that fluid, if you haven't treated the problem, you know, which is the arthritis or the meniscus tear or anything else that's causing swelling, you've taken the fluid out today, but then tomorrow the fluid comes right back. Um, and then these patients get frustrated because now they've had a surgery that they consider was not helpful um, and they have this reoccurrence. But what's worst is, you know, sometimes because the knee is producing fluid, someone tries to excise it, they lance it, they open it, and then it keeps draining and draining and draining. And now the patient's even more unhappy because now they have this draining sinus that can then get infected. Um, So, you know, I never excise these. Now, once in a blue moon, I'll aspirate them. These are the ones, I mean, these are literally like the size of a cantaloupe. I mean, someone can't bend their knee. That's extremely rare. 
Um, you'll hear a lot of um, doctors or rheumatologists will aspirate them with the use of an ultrasound, which is important because behind the knee, you know, there's a large nerve and artery, and you don't want to go blindly sticking a needle back there unless you really know what you're doing. But again, lo and behold, you take the fluid out and then it comes right back again. So the important thing to understand is that there are some treatments for the symptoms of a Baker cyst. And there are also things that you can do to treat the thing, which is causing the fluid production, which is resulting in the Baker cyst. Um, Now, the only other sort of understanding caveat to know, though, is there are times when these can be extremely painful. And this is what's been called or termed a ruptured Baker cyst. So what this is, is that sac behind the knee starts to swell, but then that tissue gets very thin and almost like a woman's stocking that gets a rip in it, you get this rent and now there's this opening and that fluid in your knee will then leak out behind your knee into the tissue. And usually with gravity, it will come down into the calf muscle. And I've had patients actually describe it as saying they felt that their leg was wet but they reached back there and there was nothing back there. So they were probably feeling that fluid inside their body and it gave them that wet kind of feeling as it leaked down. And that fluid going into the muscle can cause extreme pain. It can cause redness and it can cause swelling and inability to walk. You know, patients will say, I couldn't bear any weight. So they wind up in the ER and they get an ultrasound because somebody wants to rule out the possibility of them developing a blood clot. And lo and behold, the ultrasound report says, Findings consistent with a ruptured Baker cyst. So if you have a ruptured Baker cyst or you have a symptomatic Baker cyst or you have a Baker cyst that just bothers you because it's unsightly and large, even though it doesn't hurt, there are a number of treatment options, even that Sir Morton Baker described back in the 1800s, which still hold true today. So first and foremost, you want to compress the area. So for someone that has direct swelling behind the knee, sometimes a knee sleeve is all that you need or an ace wrap. If the swelling is further up or down the leg, you may need more than one ace wrap or a thigh high sort of compression stocking. The importance there is whether or not you're using a knee sleeve, a stocking or an ace wrap is you can't make it too tight because this can actually cause more problems and cause more swelling below the wrap. So you want compression, which will help that. Ice can help. So by putting ice on there with the compression, that will reduce some of the inflammation and swelling. The other option then is the use of anti-inflammatories. So pills like ibuprofen and naproxen or other prescription anti-inflammatories can help and elevation. So those are all four simple things that you can do if you're suffering right now at home is wrap it, ice it, elevate it, take some anti-inflammatories. And for a lot of patients, the symptoms will subside. The swelling will go down. Now, because it's caused by a chronic condition, typically arthritis, if the arthritis isn't removed or doesn't uh, have a knee replacement put in or doesn't have the arthritis typically resolve, which it won't because it's a progressive disease, you're probably going to have this happen again. So when it happens again in a month or two or six months or a year, if you can treat it again with compression and ice and elevation and anti-inflammatories, it tends to go away. Now, if someone does all of that and still has pain, you know, occasionally we can put anti-inflammatory medicine directly at the source of the problem, so cortisone injection. And again, if it's extremely large, you know, occasionally it's amenable to an aspiration and that will make it go away. But for my patients that have total knee replacements because of arthritis, but they also suffer from a Baker cyst, you know, their common question always is, well, will you remove the Baker cyst when you're in there? And again, it's not really a thing. We don't take it out and I can show it to you and go, oh, here's the cyst that I removed. But what will happen is when we go in there, you're working in the front of the knee, you remove the bone spurs and the bad cartilage. And when we bend the knee up, typically you'll get the stuff that comes out and it looks like this kind of thick, marmalade. It's like an orange kind of peach marmalade. That's sort of the color. And what that is, is the knee fluid, which has been pushed in the back of the knee and your body tries to absorb the watery parts, but these proteins are left over. And it's this thick gelatinous material, which is why when people usually try to aspirate it with a needle, they don't get much out because it's so thick. You can't suck that out through the needle. But when we're back there and you're physically in the knee and you bend the knee up, you actually see this stuff press from the back into the front of the knee. And it can be quite significant, the actual amount. So we'll wash it out, flush it out. 
but there's not a thing that I'm removing that is the Baker cyst. It was the fluid in this sac or this potential space. But now the knee replacement's performed, and because the arthritis is gone, the chronic swelling that they had in the knee will not come back. But when they wake up and they put their hand back there, they typically feel a lump. Why? Because that area has been stretched out, and now after surgery, there will be some bleeding in the knee. So the blood will fill in that area, but because the blood will be reabsorbed and the swelling goes down and the knee replacement has cured them of their arthritis, that Baker cyst over time will resolve and then go away. So I hope this really answers you know, a lot of the questions that you may have about Baker cysts because you know, I get a lot of patients that come in that are quite scared and fearful about what the report said or what the doctor in the ER or their primary said. And for a lot of patients, you know, we can't really see them that day. It's not a fracture. It's not an emergency. Um, so people are suffering at home. And this really gives you that information where, you know, I find from some of my talks or lectures, I really like it when patients say, you know, I thought I had this, you know, I listened to your talk or lecture. I did what you recommended in the treatment and I'm here for my evaluation a week later, but I'm already better or I'm getting better. Um, and they just want that extra vote of confidence that there's nothing else going on and that they're heading down the right path. So these are things that if you're suffering from a Baker cyst, you can start right away with compression, ice, elevation, anti-inflammatories if it's not contraindicated for you. And what you may find is over the next couple of days is those symptoms resolve. So thank you for listening. I hope that you've found the information helpful. If you have a friend or family member that you think would benefit from this information, please share this podcast episode with them. And until next time, I'm Adam Rosen. You've been listening to the Your Knee, Your Health podcast. Thanks for listening to the Your Knee, Your Health podcast. If you've not already done so, please subscribe so you'll be notified of future episodes. And if you enjoy what you're hearing, please take the time to leave a review. It helps other people like you find the show. I'm your host, Adam Rosen, and until next time, stay safe.